Here is the story how the air shoes was created and used by many companies around the world. Now let's check in with Dr. Gideon Ariel, our computer and technical advisor. Dick, in all athletic events that we analyze here, whether it was the gymnast, the boxers, the weightlifter, the basketball, you always have to use shoes. Shoes are very important because that's where you contact with the earth or you contact with the ground. You cannot apply force to the body or to the implement if you don't apply it to the ground because according to Newton's third law, you have an action and reaction parameters. In other words, the more you push up, the more the body push down. And you have to wear shoes to ab absorb some of the shock. Well, if you take ordinary shoes like that, it's a running shoes, the question is, what is the characteristics of the curvature? How thick should it be? How much shock absorption it, it would be? According to our research, not too much information was really given to the shoes. They are getting better and better. But the question is, one, a shoe that weighs one ounce less, is it really a better shoe? What is the best shock absorption characteristics of a shoe? Well, believe it or not, we found that it's not necessarily a material. We designed a shoe where you can inflate the shoe. You can take a little pump here and actually inflate the shoes in. So the shoe is filled up with air. Now when you run on it, you have a fantastic shock absorption. But always remember, the more shock absorption you have, the more energy you lose. For example, let's take a sprinter shoes. When you look on a sprinter shoe, a sprinter shoe has no shock absorption at all because you want all the forces to go in the direction of the run. So for racing, you don't want shock absorption. For running across the block or around the block for exercise, maybe you want inflatable shoes. In some cases in the future, we will design a special shoes. Here is a sprinting shoes. Look on this wedge here. What this wedge does, it contributes to the forces in the sprinting toward the forward motion. So this shoe was designed specially with a very special design. In the future, almost in every event, modern technology will be used, so future sport will be relying on this technology to have the most sophisticated shoes for the athletes and the most sophisticated shoes for the general public. The Koto Research Center, located in Trabuco Canyon, California, is home for one of this country's leading experts in the quickly emerging field of biomechanics, Dr. Gideon Ariel. Here, surrounded by his arsenal of computer hardware and software, Dr. Ariel and his staff work to gain a better understanding of human locomotion and the factors that influence and affect movement. The process starts with a combination of high-speed photography, and sensor measurements of muscle activity. Sensor measurements are achieved with the use of two specialized pieces of equipment, the electromyograph, or EMG, and the Kistler force platform. Electrodes are placed on the muscles to be measured, and through radio signals, data is sent to the computers where calculations can be easily performed. In the same manner, the force platform is used to measure how different forces come into play as each step or stride is taken. These measurements include the amount of torque and the vertical, horizontal, and lateral pressures placed on each muscle as the movement progresses. Why is this important for a better shoe design? Dr. Ariel explains. When we want to optimize athletic performance, or we want to optimize other athletic equipment, or a shoe. We have to rely on science rather than on the guess because the human eye is very inefficient in trying to see the forces. We have to measure the forces. The field that allows us to measure the forces in biological system is the field of biomechanics. Using a high technology and computer system, it allows us to take a high-speed cinematography, measuring the material, measuring the duration of the step and that allow us to design an optimal shoes. We want to know, for example, how much shock absorption we want in the shoe. We would like to know how much the shoe should bend, actually, when you walk in it. We would like to know how much energy is lost and how much energy is recovered. All these factors 
are extremely important in designing a comfortable shoe. We rely on a high-speed cinematography where we're taking a high-speed film. We rely on force platform where it measures all the forces when a person strikes the ground. We're measuring different surfaces and how they interact with the different shoes. And putting all these characteristics into our computer technology allows us to design the optimal shoe for the person. Instead of putting a shoe in a person, we put in a person in the shoe. And this is the most important factor in optimizing shoe design. Once all the data is recorded, the computers are used to calculate and analyze the information. Each frame taken of the subject is used to trace the body's movement. Using a digitizing pen, Dr. Ariel inputs the position of each joint. From these points, the computer generates stick figures that duplicate the actual movement. This is an important point because a large part of the reason biomechanics is so successful at improving performance, reducing injury, and designing better products is the fact that it analyzes real movement, not simulations. These stick figures can be manipulated to provide a clear picture of how each body part moves in terms of speed, acceleration, and energy output. For Lowell, all of this has come together in the production of a truly comfortable, efficient shoe. In order to optimize the best shoes, we had to start with people walking, running, jogging, standing, and find what are the characteristics of these activities from a biomechanical point of view. When we learn about that, we start designing shoes with proper characteristics. What characteristics are? The proper shock absorption, the counter of the sole, uh, the comfort characteristics of the shoes, uh, what shape the sole should have. For example, we finding out, found out that you need a concave sole, so you will have like a trampoline effect. Also, we want to know how much shock absorption a person wanted in the shoe. We don't want too much shock absorption because, you know, walking on sand, which has very good shock absorption, it's not very comfortable after you walk a mile. Also, going on a hard surface might be very efficient, but after a mile, you will feel your feet. So we needed to compromise between a very efficient uh, a shoe that don't absorb any shock and between a shoe that absorbs too much shock. And we came with a proper design, with a proper sole and the contours of the sole, with the proper comfort characteristics to design the optimized shoes relying on the biomechanical data, on the electromyogram data, on all the characteristics of walking that require. And by integrating all these characteristics, we came with the most optimized shoes available today.